Hey everyone, Joe Youngbud here. Here's your previews, predictions for the 2019 District 1 AAA Section North. Look at the lineup here of teams. It's heavy with the pack. And then this one kind of has, I think, maybe draws from the most different mo the most different leagues. If that makes sense. You got Constoker from the center. You got Great Valley representing the Chessmont. Um, you look, you got Southerton representing the Suburban One. So this one really brings in a lot of, uh, you know, brings in teams from other uh, leagues more so than I think the other ones do. Um, you know, obviously the the pack is the pack, and uh, you know, as a league, maybe the the strongest league in District One, um, you know, possesses uh, your, your traditional powers: Boyer Town, Spring Ford, Owen J. Uh, you know, I like um, I like Satterton's team. Uh, they got some tough individuals. Uh, you know, Great Valley brings in Ethan Seeley. Uh, you know, Constable brings in Paul Pelham. So it just add, definitely adds to it. Postgrove has some tough guys. Uh, so Methacton's got got a couple hammers on their squad. Uh, you know, upper perks on the on the way up. Uh, you know, I don't know. I doubt they'll ever be what they were, but they're they're coming back, and they got some tough guys that are gonna uh, you know gonna compete. Um, as I said in my other recording, this is the only one that you watch. It's a little bit different than in years than years past. Uh, there won't be any reveal boxes. Uh, and as I said, it's not that I didn't want to do it. It's that I just didn't have the time to do it. And I do apologize. But uh, when you're done watching it, if you want to jump on the forum, shoot me a message or give me some feedback on what you like better. If you if you go ahead and listen to all of my previews this uh, for this weekends tournaments i did two in podcast style i did the the south and the west in a podcast style where i just talked about each weight class and then the east and the north with the visual with the brackets uh the, we will have brackets for uh visual for regionals however if you want it podcast style uh, you know i'll take suggestions i'll see what um you know what people think uh but at least i'm just trying to uh you know do what's easiest for for and what uh what what's not easiest and what uh everyone likes easiest for everyone uh not for me uh you know the this is um you know, just uh, something I do enjoy doing. I do appreciate all feedback, and I always try to make it look, uh, you know, better each and every time. So, with that said, let's jump into 106. After I, I preview all 14 weight classes, I will uh, give you my thoughts on who I think the team champ will be, and uh, you know, top. I'm gonna go top three teams here, but let's jump into 106 pounds. And 106 pounds. Uh, this one, not a lot. It's not, not, not definitely not the strongest weight class here in the North. I think uh, you know J Julian Maldonado or Jay Maldonado is the is the top guy. Um, I'm gonna lo look to you know down here at the at the bottom. Um, got got two upsets down at the bottom as you can see. I got Dominic Ortlip. I know he's 13 and 18. Small guy. I love the way he competes. I don't know that he weighs 96 pounds, let alone 106. Uh, I think he beats uh, fellow freshman Matt Milkowicz from Upper Perk, and I think he beats Luke Ritchie, fellow freshman from Perk Valley. Uh, Ortlip, 13 and 18, but he's wrestled a, a, a tough schedule. Uh, you know, I think Springford has done a lot in the past and most recently to up their schedule, come a little, get a little bit more. Uh, stiff competition. Although he has a losing record, I think he's been a lot more scraps than Milkowicz and Ricci have been. And uh, I'm giving a nod to Ortlip, and then Ortlip losing to Maldonado in the final. If we look at the drop down in the Wrestlebacks. Got Milko um, Lindgren losing in the semis. Uh, sorry, I didn't say that. Uh, from Pottsgrove, tough sophomore. Uh, he gets Milkowicz. In the Conti semis, I think Milkowicz wins, and Ricci gets Ragusa. I think Ricci beats him, and Ricci ultimately takes third with Lindgren beating Ragusa for fifth. So again, some upsets right out of the shoot here at 106 pounds, and just I just think that Ortlips had some tougher matches, and I think he's gonna be ready to go. And you know, the Springford team is is coming off uh, you know uh, a nice run at state duels, and. You know they had wins over uh, O and J uh, in in back to back weeks. Uh, you know at, at district duels and again at uh, at state duels. Uh, so they're you know they're wrestling with a lot of confidence. Uh, you know coming into this uh, tournament. So let's go into 113 pounds. 
and look at this weight class. I think, again, uh, I, Shane Reynolds is kind of the, the I think, the, the class of this, uh, of 113 pounds. Uh, another guy I like to watch wrestle, 413-pounder. Uh, you know, he's slapped together, and he's physical, and he goes out and wrestles a real physical match. And I, I, I like that he works to impose his will on his opponent. And uh, to me, I, I just, I, it just, it's an appealing style to me. And he goes out and it's not just a bruiser. He's not just a brawler. He, he, he's got, he's got a lot of technique and finesse to what he does. And as I said, just top to bottom, I like to I like what is his game's all about. Um, I'm excited to see Jackson Reynolds in that quarterfinals. I mean, Josh Jackson, Rowan Jay, 13 and 13. He's got some big wins and he's just a second year guy. And you know, you got to put things in perspective. He's a second year guy and it's going to be, it's going to be a roller coaster ride with him. There's going to be some high highs and there's gonna be some low lows. But the one thing about him, he's, he's strong. He's strong as strong can be. And he can, he can match horsepower. With some of these guys. And, you know, he gave, he, he's had a close match with, with Reynolds and he's had a not so close match at Reynolds. So we'll see what happens. Uh, see if he can close the gap and maybe even more. And Jackson, you know, he's not a guy you can, you can take lightly. Um, you know, you look down and you got Antonio Valentin back from injury, just got cleared uh, to, you know, just got cleared to wrestle uh, last week from what his coaches told me. Uh, you know, he's got 12 wins, but a lot of them are forfeits. Uh, but again, he was the regional qualifier last year. Uh, he's kind of got a, you know, he's got a, a, a road to, to, I think he goes to the semis coming out of that five seed. Uh, you know, we look down the bottom, but I think Reynolds is going to be too physical for him. I don't think he can, uh, he doesn't have the horsepower to match what Reynolds uh, has. Uh, looking down at the bottom half, you got David Heiser. Uh, I think he beats Dylan Bach to get to the semis. And, uh, I'm going to go I'm gonna roll with Matt Martin, the junior. He's a true 13-pounder. Uh, David Heiser doesn't weigh. He's a, he's a six-pounder, and he's wrestling 13 because, he, you know, he Maldonado's at six. So I think Martin on the on the – basis that he's a he's a bigger guy gets to win and and he, he's tough not taking anything away from me he's 21 six like i'm not saying it's the only reason why i just think that his skill level coupled with his size against david heiser is just gonna be too much so we looked at the wrestle backs in the drop down here and uh i think valentin beats ended up beating bach to get to the uh Concy semi or into the uh Concy final and the, the match I, I'm curious about, and I, I want to see is this day if it happens. David Heiser and Jackson. Jackson owns a win over Jay Maldonado or Julian Maldonado, uh, where he pinned him in the dual meet. Uh, Maldonado later on when they wrestled, I, I believe Tech followed him in like three minutes. But I, I, I maybe think Maldonado was looking past him a little bit in that first time they wrestled, and he he, he wasn't looking past him the second time, as indicated by the score. But Jackson is like i said he is strong and uh you know I, I think it's no secret i i do teach and coach at onj and i do have jackson in, in weight training and the kid can put can can move weight and i think he will give david heiser trouble because of how physical he can be and, and how strong he is. David Heiser is the better wrestler. I'm not going to deny that. I think David Heiser gets by on that. And I think David Heiser then beats Valentin because he's a better wrestler than Valentin. And, and again, not taking anything away from Antonio Valentin. I think if this were a situation where Valentin didn't miss most of the season with injury, that I don't know that I'd pick this same way. I just think Valentin's going to, the gas tank's not going to be there yet. Um, he's still wrestling his way into shape. And if uh, I'm going to go on a limb and I'm going to assume uh, that Coach Clark and his staff are, are going to have him ready for regionals. The, the, the thing is just getting him there and getting him another week to train, another week to get in shape. And, you know, he's going to be a tough out at regionals. He's going to get there. He's going to be a fourth place guy out of the north. And, you know, take whatever, you know, whoever he gets in front of him. And, you know, he's going to go and he's going to be a tough out at, 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 um, at, uh, at regionals. Uh, but I, this, this match is intriguing here. It, it, for me, almost maybe the match, uh, I would say David Heiser Martin is going to be a really great match to watch. And then David Heiser, 
uh, Jackson is going to be another great match to watch. And I think Jackson then beats Bach for fifth place. So, uh, you know, it's just right out of the, right out of the gate here in the two and in, in one thirteen having some, some good matches and, uh, deciding fate of whether or not your season ends or doesn't end. And if, again, I, I made the comment in, in one of the previews, uh, and it, it, just saying it again in case you haven't, if you don't listen to all of them, for you guys out there that are wrestling, that are that are listening to these, um, rest, and you get in a fifth place match, wrestle it, take it serious, wrestle it, and go out and win. Be that number, be that guy on deck if someone gets hurt. You don't know what's going to happen. We've seen how many times in the past uh, where um, a guy gets the call midweek or knows leaving that that tournament that the guy a guy ahead of him that place that qualified got hurt I'm trying to name escapes me right now and I'll, it'll come to me at some point we had a guy in district one was the sixth place guy and didn't wasn't going to states came uh someone got hurt and it was an avon grove guy and and he comes in as uh, the alternate goes to states and medals uh, it just anything can happen you, that's why you wrestle that match don't be discouraged because you're in it go out and treat it seriously because and I, again I'm, I'm repeating myself but if you didn't listen to any other ones you'll hear it here that's an opportunity to potentially end your season with a win not many people get to say that they can do that and I know maybe it's not the win you want to have but it's a win nevertheless so we'll move on to 120 pounds and if you would have told me at the beginning of the year that uh, Quinn Tobin would be in the one seed here. I don't know what I would have believed you. I, I would have given you like the side eye and I would have been shocked. But to see the the corner at Quinn Tobin turn from his freshman sophomore years to now uh, has been just, it's been nice to watch. I mean, he just looks, he wrestles out there with so much confidence and he controls the pace and, and he dictates what happens. And it, it, it's it's nice it's really nice to to watch to see a guy that, that start to put it together he always had the talent and uh but it, to see him like put it all together on a consistent basis go 27 and 6 with the schedule that that spring Ford's wrestled pretty uh pretty impressive in my eyes and i, I tip my cap to him uh this weight class doesn't it isn't isn't really that deep um you know i think it's a two a two guy race between force and tobin and uh, I think Force and Tobin make the final. I think Tobin beats him again. Uh, David Force has shown hasn't shown me much lately to, to believe in. I I know he was sick, uh, you know, pretty sick actually. Uh, but since he's been back from being sick, he hasn't been a hundred percent. I'm hoping you know to see you know David Force a hundred percent and see him and Tobin go at it. But uh, you know, until he shows me otherwise, um, I, I I got Quinn Tobin winning it uh, here for the Rams. In spring forward. We look at the wrestlebacks here. Uh, Chance Bab, freshman, and again twenty and seventeen. You look at a Boyer Town. You know the schedule they wrestle. You see twenty and seventeen, and you know, you got them somewhere in the wrestlebacks, and the, the you know the hair in the back of your neck should uh should stand up a little bit. So. Uh, I think Bab comes out of that of that cross bracket after losing the Forest, and you know goes on a tear, beats Carmona, beats Carpenter, beats Geiger, and takes third place. You know, coming from like the you know that bottom half of that bracket, uh, and Geiger, the other guy, coming out and uh, taking fourth, and Carpenter beating Baker for fifth. And there you have it, Chance Bab. Uh, I, you know, I just like the way he wrestles. He goes out and he goes out and mixes it up. He goes out and battles, and again. History tells us anything. Boyertown guys, they, they do a nice job come postseason, and I don't think this is any different. And this is Babs, a kid that I got to watch wrestle through middle school, and uh, you know he's, he's enjoying a, a really nice freshman year for him. You know, twenty wins, uh, and I think he he puts a uh, uh, exclamation point on it by by um, you know stamping his his uh, ticket to get to regionals. So we're going one hundred twenty six pounds. And again, not not one of the stronger weight classes here in the north. Uh, and, you know, clearly, I think PJ Keiko's from Perk Valley is is the uh, is going to win it. Uh, you know, Dom Sheridan, that fifth seed coming out, I think he uh, comes out and beats Liam Walker and gets to the semifinals. Uh, Jacob Dunleavy, that fourth seed, and comes out and makes the final, beats uh, Casey Capitola from 
Great Valley in the quarters to get to that final and, and makes his, uh, you know, stamps his ticket for his first trip to regionals. We look at the wrestle back, so, and I think Sheridan comes back after losing the semis and beats Milkowicz to get into the uh, Consi final. And, and his opponent would be Casey Capitola from Great Valley with Sheridan winning. Again, I'm going to go, uh, you know, pack first through third, Kekos, Dunleavy, Sheridan, and Capitola with, um, Milkowicz beating Walker for fifth place. Uh, you know, I like the way Kekos has been wrestling this year. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, when it gets to regionals. Uh, see if the, you know, he hasn't had the, the top level schedule to, to really push him. Uh, he's a, you know, he's a guy I know that wrestles a lot, does a lot year round. Younger brother, tough kid uh, on, on Perk Valley's middle school team. So, um, you know, it's a family that, that you know, of wrestlers uh, from there. So we'll see if uh, that, you know, lack of competition does catch up to him. But I, I think he cruises here. He's, you know, I think the best guy in this weight class, uh, without a doubt in my mind. Uh, it's moving 132 pounds. Uh, we got uh, Isaiah Tucker out of Norristown. He's junior, he's 22 and 2, the one seed. Um, this weight class again has a has some some tough guys um no no hammers in this weight class and uh it just uh, but i think it's got some consistent talent you, know, you can go you know, tucker and um johns who missed some time uh but was tough uh nevertheless uh cerrito from pottsgrove is is, is tough uh demand demand thompson from pottstown uh, and then you have uh, you know Morgan Laughlin from Conestoga. Uh, I think Tucker wins it when it's all said and done, beating Laughlin in the final. And then you have um, uh, Johns coming down and wrestling Coleman from uh, Park Valley with Johns beating him. Thompson coming down and uh, you know Engelhart. Uh, he, he's been wrestling well as of late, and uh, you know he's got some got some good wins and and I just. He's a senior that that I, that I always root for, and not just because uh, you know he's from the school that I, uh, that I work at and or that I've coached him. He's just a hard worker. He puts in the time, and you know he's he's had some good matches here down the stretch. I think he beats Cerrito. I think he beats Thompson, and uh, but I think his luck runs out against Johns. But uh, I'm, I'm I'm picking this senior here to make a run here and get to the get to regionals as a senior. I think it'd be a huge uh, boost for him. And, uh, you know, for a kid that just, just puts in a, a, a lot of time, not that these other guys don't, but it's, it's, it's one more that I, I, I actually see the amount of work that he, that he puts in, uh, you know, moving on, uh, you know, this weight class, at least said, uh, before moving on, uh, I think Tucker and Laughlin will be a pretty good final, but I think Tucker at the end of the day is, uh, is, a, is the tougher guy and is going to, um, uh, you beat Laughlin. So let's move into 138 pounds. And this, this one is where it's, it's going to get spicy. So, uh, no, no reveals here. You can, you can see as I talk what I got going on. Um, Tyler Williams, your one seed. And we look at this and right now in the most recent, uh, PA power wrestling rankings, Williams, Petroselli, McGill, McNair are all ranked in the top nine. I think you have Williams at two ish, Petroselli at four, McNair at five, and I'm almost positive, maybe five and six, four and five, and McGill at nine. So you got four guys in the top nine in this weight class. And then, you know, you got some other guys that are, you know, not, you know, not the, not the toughest guy. This is very top heavy with four guys. And I'm going to go with Williams based on body of work up to this point. And I'm going to say Williams beats Petroselli in a semifinals. And, but I, I, I can easily see it going the other way. Uh, you know, if you watch Petroselli wrestle, um, you know, this is where I, I, I mentioned one of the other previews where I, I scratched my head at, at how the formula gave us what it gave us. And, and, and again, I'll explain it. And it's not, it's not me. You, you, some will say it's me being a homer, but, but I guess, I guess hear me out. So Williams, no doubt, I believe he should be the one seed. Uh, you know, he's 29 and two and returning state medalist. Uh, but, but here's where I take some issues. So we got 
Kibwe is 25 and 1. His lone loss is Petroselli. If you compare their schedules and level of talent, now McNair does have some, does have some good wins. So is Petroselli. Uh, and then McGill. McGill and Petroselli are 1 and 1 against each other. Um, and again, he's 32 and 5. Petroselli is 33 and 6. I would say they wrestled comparable schedules with Petroselli wrestling, uh, you know, a tougher schedule. Owen Jay's schedule is tougher than, than Spring Forward. I think most would agree on that, given that the, the tournaments that they hit. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, that's, I, 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 I'm going to rest that those are facts. I, I guess I, I struggle more with McGill getting the, the three over the, over Petroselli. Um, but, you know, in any event, you got to wrestle, you got to wrestle these guys at some point in time and so you know i'm not gonna sit here and get on a soapbox and say that the the formula is broken because in most cases it's spot on i would just like to see how the numbers broke down on this one uh, to see how how close it really was getting back to i think williams beats petroselli just a hunch uh but you know it's going to be fun to watch that match. I, those are me two guys that are going to battle. Uh, you know, I, I talked earlier in the year about Williams and how uh, I, he just keeps coming at you, and that's exactly what Petroselli does. He just attacks, attacks, and they're, I think they're just going to. It's going to be uh, uh, two guys with the pedal on the floor for for six minutes or however long it takes. Um, you know what Petroselli needs to avoid doing is is trying to hit. I don't know, big moves, uh, in my opinion. It's just, you know, sometimes it feels forced on my end, uh, and I think others would agree. Go on the other side, bottom half of the bracket. I think McNair beats McGill because McNair is going to wrestle a smarter match. Uh, he's not going to, he's going to pick and choose his attacks, and his leg attacks are going to be too much for McGill. He's going to be too fast for him. And uh, I think McGill and uh, McGill's going to try and get to his ties and try and get uh, his hooks going with McNair. And I think McNair is going to be too crafty and not let it happen. And uh, that's going to set up a Williams and McNair match. I think then Williams is going to be able to out wrestle McNair and, uh, you know, keep uh, McNair's speed and athleticism at bay. If you drop down, you could probably assume where I'm going with who's going to win their consolation semifinal matches. And it's going to be Petroselli McGill part three. And I don't think this will be the last time they wrestle. I think they might see each other at regionals again. I think Petroselli wins again. If you watch the first match, uh, uncharacteristically, Petroselli tried three throws in the first half and the first period and ends up going in the second down 6 2. And I think he took him down in that match four or five times in the third period and cut him. Um, but the, the, the hole he was in was too much from the, from the jump that it, he couldn't make it up. Fast forward to wrestling at state duels, and he wrestled him again, and he wrestled a, a smarter match. And you didn't try and go up or by with McGill, and it, and it, 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 it definitely bowed in his favor. So... You see, Petroselli wrestle a smarter match against him the third time because he learned from those mistakes, and you know, uh, as a result, uh, get the win and, and finish third and, and get back to regionals. Uh, then you know, I have Mucklow beating uh, July four for fifth place. But really, this is a four guy bracket in my opinion. Um, you know, and probably the opinion of some others, and that's no disrespect to anyone else. That these just four guys are just on such a higher level than everyone else in this bracket, and that's not any slight of anyone in this bracket. That's that; those are facts. So, let's move on uh, to 145, and uh, you know, as a result of of Petrosley dropping to 38, Meredith goes to 45. Uh, you know, he's the one seed here. This quarterfinal match, or semifinal match between him and Neils, they they've got history. Uh, last year, he uh, Meredith Neils wrestled, and Meredith like tech fought him or pinned him, and then Neils came back and it took him to overtime like a week later in district duels. And then this year, they've wrestled a close match already. So I, I'm looking forward to this one. It, like Neils, just he just. He finds ways to stay in matches. And, you know, he wrestled that first time, and, and Meredith was too much for him. And then, you know, he started figuring him out and been able to keep it close since. 
And then on the bottom half, you know, other guys, uh, tough guys in his, in his bracket. You got Nick Seaman, Owen Cook, uh, uh, Coke, the freshman from Phoenixville, is uh, is pretty tough. Has a bright future. Um, then you have Rosansky on the bottom half, the three seed. Uh, you got Ezra Toll uh, from Conestoga. Uh, Steve Henley is coming off a, a pin over Cole Meredith. I uh, caught Meredith in a, in a near side cradle and pinned him uh, in the pack final dual match. And then, uh, you know, you have uh, Connor Trowbridge, senior from um, Satterton down at the bottom half. I think Trowbridge comes out of that bottom half, that bracket, and faces Meredith, but ultimately Cole Meredith with the win at the uh, for the uh, – for the Wildcats and uh, is a champ there. We looked down at the, at the, the bottom half and the wrestlebacks. Uh, I got Henley versus Needles, which is a match I think can be could be a good match. I think Needles is just a better wrestler. Henley though, Henley though, is tough as they come, and he's just a tough kid uh, that's you know just getting better with every match out. But I didn't think Needles is too much for him uh, as, as, from a wrestling standpoint. And then uh, Rosansky versus Seaman to go. And I think Rosansky beats him. And then Needles beats Rosansky to take third. And then uh, Seaman beating Henley to uh, to essentially take uh, fifth place. Uh, you know, that's how I have it panning out. Meredith, Trowbridge, Needles, Rosansky. So we jump into 152 pounds. Uh, I don't think I need to say a whole lot here. This is Dan Mancini's weight class. Uh, he will, I think, cruise to to the title here. Um, you know, Brightor and Nugent and Riley Raleigh are, uh, are 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 pretty good, but they're just not on the level of, of Mancini. Um, you know, Nugent Mancini have gone have wrestled this uh, this past year twice, uh, definitely once, maybe once, and uh, Mancini took it to him. Um, I, and I, I imagine more the same uh, of that, uh, you know, some catch and release, and uh, you know, Mancini looking to uh, you know push the pace. Uh, this is gonna be a close team race, so he's definitely gonna be hunting for bonus points, and that's gonna be the mindset going into it. On the bottom half of the bracket, that Raleigh Brider match, um, I, I think Brider wins uh, again. The the Boer Town, better room, tougher schedule. You know, the, I just, just again, the uh, way I feel about it. Uh, and and Brider is just, he's just tough. He's you know, 27 11 on that schedule. Boy, 10 wrestles is, is nothing to, to, to um, uh, take lightly. And, uh, you know, Raleigh, he's 20 and 3, but, you know, you know PB schedule is, uh, is not what, uh, not, not nearly as tough. Uh, and, uh, Looking down at the bottom half of the bracket, I, in this one, I think it, it, it ends up uh, with Nugent and Raleigh coming out for third and fourth place. Uh, Nugent beating Raleigh to get there. And again, this weight class doesn't doesn't have uh, you know the, the the top end talent some of the others have. It's it's pretty top. Uh, I'm sorry, balanced talent. A lot of that have. It's uh, pretty top heavy with uh, Mancini, Brightor, Raleigh, and Nugent. And uh, as, you know, I think it goes Mancini, Brightor, Nugent, Raleigh. I think Nugent, uh, you know, out wrestles his seed one one place and ends up uh, taking uh, taking third. Uh, sorry about that. I gotta bump over here. This was a, a match, a, a bracket that was updated, so I had it in a different window. Uh, 160 pound bracket. Uh, and and again, I guess I should address it. Some of the brackets I w- was already done and recording when the changes came out. So if they're not accurate, I do apologize. Uh, there really weren't too many huge changes. Like Colin Hurley was a big change. Connor Quinn in this one was a big change. So that's why I went and had to get the updated bracket and bring it over uh, into uh, you know uh, the program I use here to to um, annotate and, and write the names in. Um, so looking at uh, this bracket here, you got Roman Moser, the one seed, uh, you return state qualifier. Uh, you know, down the, the bottom half of the bracket, you got Mortimer's returning state qualifier, Connor Quinn's returning state qualifier. So this one's got some uh, some top end town again. Alex Washington is uh, you know a tough senior from Phoenixville, and uh, you know you got uh, Troy uh, Mockluck from Satterton. And then aside from that, like it's not uh, not exactly the toughest weight class. I think Moser cruises to the final. I think Moser beats Quinn to uh, to win it. 
Uh, that Quinn Mortimer match is going to be a good one. Uh, Mortimer still wrestling his way back into shape. Uh, Quinn beat him earlier in the year. I believe at District Duels he beat him. And uh, like I said, Mortimer's wrestling his way back into shape. He had a, a nasty concussion earlier in the year from what I've been told. And uh, he missed just a lot of time. And he, you know, we covered their match, Boyertown's match against um, Westchester Henderson. And you can just see after the first period, like he, he was winded. And, 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 you know, that's that's almost a month ago. Uh, so, I'm, you know, he's in a much better place now. But he's, like I say, still wrestling his way into shape. And uh, it's not easy. Uh, you know, I think all of us that have wrestled before know, again, you know, being in shape and being in wrestling shape are uh, two different things. And, and, you know, getting into that wrestling shape uh, just takes a little bit of time. And I, I think at this point, he's being so maybe he closes that gap with Quinn. But this could be a close match. Could go either way. I just got Quinn winning it. He won last time. And, uh, you know, um, but, you know, Quinn in his own right is a little nicked up himself. Uh, so, again, I think Moser's just, uh, you know, he's got a little bit too much for Quinn right now. But again, we'll we'll see. I uh, looked down at the the bottom half of the brother, or I'm uh, not the bottom half. The wrestlebacks. Uh, Washington drops down, sees Kershaw, beats Kershaw, and qualifies for regionals. And then Mortimer beats uh, Mucklock to, and then beats Washington, takes third. So then you have uh, Moser from Methacton, Quinn from O and J, Mortimer from Boyertown, Washington from Phoenixville, uh, and then your top four, and then Mucklock beating Kershaw for fifth place. So that's what we have there at 160 pounds. Let me jump back over here and go. Oh, sorry, one, one too many. 170 is going to be a fun one. It's got some, uh, you know, some it's got three tough guys, real tough guys, and and uh, you know Andrew DeSantos, uh, you know, uh, you know, pretty tough, and so is Dave Polanke from from Phoenixville. Um, but the match. That I'm looking forward to, and this one is that semifinal between Alan Alexander and Chase Smith. Chase Smith, I believe, was coming off mono. Uh, what my sources tell me, when Alan Alexander beat him earlier in the year, and uh, I'd like to see the rematch because Alexander just keeps getting better. He's a freshman, you know, 22 and 13 is a freshman, 170 pounds, pretty impressive. Um, I think Chase Smith beats beats him. Uh, he is, um, uh, you know, back on, uh, you know, feeling better and looking better. Uh, and then in the bottom half, I have DeSanto again in the semis against McCutcheon. And McCutcheon was just wrestling really well right now. I did have a loss to, to Chase Smith at um, uh, in the dual meet between, Metha- or between Springford and Owen Jay. And then when they wrestled again at um, uh, District Duels, I don't, I don't believe they wrestled. And then when they wrestled at State Duels, McCutcheon wrestled Milano. But M- McCutcheon also had a win over over um, Nick Delp from uh, Kiski, which was huge. And he was like ranked fourth in the state's time. So he's wrestling well. And I think uh, his approach to wrestling Smith will be different this time. Uh, and I like the way their styles match up. Um, you know, McCutcheon will push the pace, and 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 uh, Smith does a nice job of counter wrestling. So I, I I enjoy that kind of that cat and mouse game uh, to see uh, you know whose whose game is better if if McCutcheon's attacks are going to be better that day, or if it's going to be Smith and able to counter his way out of things and turn you know those counters and uh, you know uses counter offense to score off of uh, McCutcheon's attacks uh, attack attempts. So it's a it's a real um, uh, uh, fun matchup for me as as a fan, uh, but I think McCutcheon gets the best of them uh, this time. If we look at the wrestlebacks at the bottom here, I got Alexander beating Haslam to get into that f- consolation final, and DeSanto beating Palanke from Phoenixville. Um, I think that Palanke Palanke DeSanto matches is, is a toss up. Um, I'm gonna go with the uh, the senior from Great Valley. Uh, they wrestle a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit more competition, and then Alexander and freshman beating DeSanto, the senior, the senior uh, to take third place, and then uh, Palenke beating Haslam to take fifth. And there's your first through six of this weight class as we go into 182 pounds, and uh, it's Joey Milano and and everybody else here. Um, just uh, just my 
you know, uh, opinion on it. And again, uh, you know, Milano, I think, is going to make it on the podium this year. He would have qualified for states last year as a freshman, tore his ACL the week between districts and regionals, or maybe with section leagues and, and districts. Uh, it was one or the other, but he tore postseason. It was unfortunate for him. It was really, uh, you know, in, enjoyed watching him wrestle. And that, that, that group of um, freshmen, that they're not sophomores, that spring four team. Uh, this is another weight class that just has a, uh, some, you know, a real hammer and a, and a bunch of other uh, uh, solid kids. Uh, w- one thing of note, I got Lakeen La- or Lakine Wallace making the final against Milano, but Milano, I think, scoring bonus points in every match in this uh, in this bracket. Uh, of note in that championship bracket, I got Tommy Dempsey coming down from 195 to 182 from ONJ. I haven't beaten Matt Hamilton from Conestoga. Uh, you know, Again, Dempsey, and I base it not just on the fact that he's wrestled tougher competition and he's probably in a better room. Based on he's been wrestling 195 pounders all year and coming down to 182 pounds, uh, one of two things are going to happen. Uh, and I'm I'm going to stick with that. These guys are going to be lighter for him, and as a result, he he's going to uh, be able to move these guys around a little bit more. Or on the flip side of it is, and like I said, I'm, I'm thinking positive, not negative. The flip side is these 182 pounders might be too quick for him or what them, what he's used to. In any event, I, I'm going to stay positive on this one that, that it's going to be, he's going to be able to, to impose his will coming down as a bigger guy and, and making the weight. Uh, just my two cents on that. Let's look at how the bracket shakes out in the bottom half. So, um, one guy I forgot to mention up top was Jacob Sturm from Park Valley. Uh, you know, I have him getting beat by Humphreys from, from, um, Great Valley. And, but then on the backside, when he comes through that, that wrestle back, I see him beating Dempsey and just being too tough for him, uh, to overcome it in that Conci semifinal and Hamilton coming off the loss to Dempsey comes through on the bottom half winning, uh, you know, on, uh, winning three matches to get that Conci final and Stern versus Hamilton with Hamilton beat, you know, uh, not, not out wrestling his seed, actually wrestling below what his seed is, but uh, nevertheless coming out and getting third after getting upset by Dempsey early on. So I think, like I said, Dempsey gets that upset early, but ends up making the semi slide, um, you know, down the, you know, not all the way to sixth place, but down to fifth place and not qualifying. Um, but you have, um, you know, Milano with bonus points all the way. Uh, again, you know, I think he bonus points every match that he wrestles, which is going to be huge for that team race and, uh, you know, making himself a definite candidate for that OW with guys like, you know, Mancini and that are going to put a lot of bonus points up. And, you know, I think ultimately maybe if anyone, the 38 pounder, whoever wins 38 might be the OW because of how tough that weight class is, you know, you know, you just never know. Uh, not to speculate too much about it, but it goes Milano, Wallace, Hamilton, Sturm, uh, Dempsey, Humphreys there at 182 pounds. So going into 195, 195 again, uh, weight class, uh, you got two guys that are just hammers um, that have been all season. Uh, then you have like two guys that are in that next tier, which are Bruno Stolfi and Zach Van Horn. And then, you know, you know Jacob Sterling's tough, Carbajal. Carbajal's tough. He's 17 and 15. But what makes him tough is he's just tough to score on. Uh, you know, he's, 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 he's a stocky built like a fire hydrant and he, he's hard to move around and he, he's got a gas tank that like you wouldn't believe. And he just, you know, he's, he's able to, to wrestle a full six minutes if, if not more, if need be. And, uh, nice kid to boot. I uh, had, had some good conversations, you know, good conversation with him at district duels and, uh, you know, a funny guy and, uh, you know, about, you know, covering matches and about, you know, some of the, the scraps he's had with Dempsey. And we talked about after at District Duels there. Uh, so, again, uh, it's a guy I enjoy, uh, I've enjoyed covering and, and conversating with. But Miller's the class of this weight cl- uh, of 195 pounds. I think Miller beats Seeley. Seeley's undefeated, but I, I just think Jacob Miller's going to be too much for him. He's been, he's been a few more scraps than, than Seeley has been. And, uh, He's just, you know, he's. I feel like he's on a mission this year to, to, you know, get to the podium at Hershey, and this is just a step or a rung on the ladder to get there. Um, looking at 
Van Horn getting to the semis and losing to Miller, and then you got Stolfi beating Carbajal, and I, I think Stol- Car- Carbajal is going to give Stolfi some fits until he can kind of figure him out and get to his offense, and and I, then I think he starts to maybe pull way late. Uh, I think Stolfi is just um, going to be too technical for him, uh, and then uh, Seeley is going to be too much for Stolfi. And we look at the drop downs there, uh, you know, Carbajal coming out from you see and uh, getting Van Horn. I think he's going to wear down Van Horn. You know, Van Horn coming in with a record of 20, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm sorry, 25 and 3. I, I, I want to say, I just think Carbajal, something about him is going to, he just, just keeps coming. It's not pretty, uh, and it, but it's effective. And, you know, that's uh, just, like I said, gut feeling. Uh, and Stolfi beating Sterling and Stolfi beating Carbajal um, again for third place, and then Sterling beating Van Horn to take uh, to take fifth. Uh, some upsets in this one, and sometimes that this way it goes. These heavier weight classes, you know, guy falls the wrong way, or you know, uh, takedown attempt goes out of bounds. Guy falls to his back. I just think that's that's. It could be the difference here, or a guy just able to outlast another guy and just just do just a little bit more than him. And uh, but you know the these hundred ninety some of these hundred ninety five pounders, as, as Glenn likes to point out, uh, and my coin phrase is be some dancing bears at this weight class. Um, not named Miller or Seely. Miller or Seely are going to come to wrestle. There's some guys that's going to push each other around a little bit and you know exchange escapes and and you know win a match in overtime and i think it's gonna be a difference in, a, in like a match with like carbajal and van horn i just think van horn he beats he beats van horn because van horn's gonna struggle to score on him because of contrasting body styles all right so moving on to 220 pounds um we've got paul pell the number one seed for costoga 22 um I, I, he's uh he's been Pretty close to lights out most of the year, but um, the the, the three seed Avery Shivak from Potsgrove was twenty six and one, and he's kind of answered the call. And every time he he's you know he's had the opportunity um, to wrestle a tough guy, and you know he's kind of in a in a way come out of nowhere to have this you know great junior season. And and, and I, I'm I, I'm I'm on the the Shivak train uh, you know per se. Um, Normally, I would say Tony Ellis would probably be the favorite here, but he's missed some time, and he's missed almost a month now coming up to this tournament. Uh, and I think it's going to come down to Ellis won't be able to out-wrestle Shivak for a full six minutes, so I'm, I'm, I'm jumping right to that semifinal there. Uh, Ellis makes that semifinal. He beats Albert from Springford, I believe, who beats uh, Dylan Bauer. Um but I think Shivak is going to be able to wear him down um, and and push that pace with Ellis. And Ellis just isn't there yet. Ellis is the better wrestler. I'm not denying that. He's a retained state qualifier. Um, but he's, I, I, I have to imagine he's not there yet. He's not all the way back yet. Uh, Ravix and, and Pelham being uh, being okay match. I think Pelham gets there. And I, I don't know. I'm just going to go with Shivak. I'm going to think Shivak beats Pelham. Uh, Shivak beat Lee. Uh, you know, maybe they use a little transitive property. Uh, Lee beat Pelham. Shivak beat Lee. Uh, there you go. Um, and like I said, Shivak kind of answered the bell every time. It's been, uh, it, it's been wrong. Uh, and then you got Albert wrestling back and, and um, uh, coming up against Ravix in the Conzi semi. Ravix beating him, and then Ellis beating Sonder, and Ellis beating Ravix to, to take third and, and uh, get back to regionals. And for Ellis, I think that's all that really needs to happen. He needs to get back to regionals, give him another self another week to, to get himself back into shape. And uh, you know he gets this you know opportunity then to get the states and then another week to get in shape before he gets out to Hershey and I think that's probably the plan at, at uh, down in Methacton with Coach Clark and his uh, staff is just getting him in shape and getting him ready to go. All right, as we go into uh, the big guys, two eighty five, um, Destin Snyder is your one seed from Pottstown, and uh, you're. I think he comes out and wins this bracket. This bracket's not doesn't overly knock your socks off. You have some solid guys and some okay guys. Uh, heavyweight in general in the region's a little down. 
this year. Uh, but I, I think Snyder wins this bracket. Brogan from Spring Forward. Uh, again, he's kind of a little bit up and down. Uh, but, you know, tough nevertheless. Big body, strong kid. Uh, I think he beats Manny Allen in the, in the quarterfinals. And that's uh, going to be big. Uh, and then Brogan loses to Snyder. And then Robert Terra from Boyertown. I know he's 9-15. I think he beats Dyer from Great Valley. Uh, but Terra's like, uh, you know, he's just... He comes out and he comes out with a lot of pace, and sometimes it's a little bit tough to handle. So, I think he gets the semis and loses to uh, Tajir Brittingham from Norristown, who then uh, loses to Snyder in the finals at uh, at heavyweight. But we look to drop down, and we see uh, you know Dyer from. Great Valley wrestle back and get to Russell Brogan from Spring Ford, who gets uh, dropped straight down from that semifinal uh, loss. And Brogan beats uh, him, in my opinion. And then Tara beats Richie Nathan after Richie Nathan goes on a little bit of a run, uh, wins some matches uh, in that in that uh, consolation bracket. And then Tara uh, loses to Brogan. Brogan takes third. Uh, so then you go Snyder, Brittenham, uh, Brogan, Tara. Uh, and then Dyer over Nathan for uh, fifth place. So, folks, there you have it. There's all 14 weight classes uh, from the from the north. Uh, now, uh, now comes the time uh, that I'm tasked with picking a, a team champion. And um, you know, I went back and forth with this uh, with this one. Uh, but I think at the end, when it when it clears, I think uh, I think Springford wins it. It's gonna be close. I mean, come around down between Springford O and J, and I think in a distant third, you're gonna see Boyertown. And I'm only going three deep here uh, because I I couldn't I really I really would struggle to f- pick a fourth team. Um, but I think Springford wins close. It's gonna it's gonna go into that final round. I think it's still gonna be undecided. But I just think you know a guy like Milano is gonna score bonus points. Um, you know, in, in all those medal rounds, um, you know, you're going to have, um, the, in the wrestling at metal round, metal round, I, I think spring is going to have more guys there. They're probably going to have a guy, they're going to have Reynolds in the finals. They're going to have Milano in the finals. They're going to have, um, potentially Orlip in the finals. Um, you know, John's probably wrestling for a medal. Needle's wrestling for a medal. Uh, McGill wrestling for a medal. Nugent wrestling for a medal. Smith wrestling for a medal. Maybe in the final, probably in the finals. Like I said, Milano in the finals. Carbajal probably wrestling for a medal. Um, maybe Albert. Uh, Brogan possibly wrestling for a medal. And you look at Owen J, and they're going to be looking at hopefully. Uh, you look for like guarantees, like Forrest should be in the final. Uh, I forgot Tobin should be in the final. Um, probably going to beat Forrest. So there's a head to head matchup knocking them out. Again, I'm just speculating off the top of my head. Uh, 26, Dunleavy in the final, uh, potentially for, for Owen J against Caicos. Uh, not sure it's a match he can win. Uh, then you go 32, maybe Engelhart in a, in, a, in for a, a medal, but probably might even be if he's in it, he might be wrestling Johns. Um, at 38, Petroselli's wrestling for a medal. Best case scenario, he's wrestling for gold. But if my my picks right, he's not wrestling for gold. 45, Meredith should be in the finals. 52. Uh, 52, Mancini should be in the finals at 60. Quinn should be in the finals at 70. McCutcheon should be in the finals, so that helps. Can they win all those matches? I, I don't know. You know, it'd be Quinn and Moser, be McCutcheon and Smith. Those are some tall tasks. And then past 60, um, maybe Dempsey's not probably wrestling for Melly. In best case scenario, he's maybe wrestling for fifth and sixth. Uh, 95, no, they don't have, ONJ has no one. 220, uh, Bauer, maybe he's got a headlock and a, and a prayer. Uh, Richie Nathan, same thing, got a headlock and a prayer. Uh, so you just, you know, you never know. Um, you know, and, and you know, those guys at, at the top for Owen J have been wrestling better as of late, but, uh, you know, there's there's some tough guys in their bracket. So, you know, just straight speculation. It's going to it's gonna be a tight race. I just think at the end, like, Spring Ford's going gonna to be able to uh, to hold them off. But 
been wrong before and you know I, I don't see it being any different in, in the chance to be wrong this time as well so folks that's what i have for you that's uh you know again please uh feedback always welcomed uh in fact if anything i say maybe don't get enough feedback good bad or indifferent as to uh you know any changes or you know tell me i'm wrong at something or uh however uh, you want to uh to to give it uh you know hit me on the forum in a message or uh anywhere on social media uh, as well to uh anything that that comes to mind any questions uh back to business as usual next week more than likely for the uh for the regional predictions preview um you know serious question uh pose all of you if you want to see the reveals with the boxes over the names and go match by match i can do that and i, I can break it up by weight class as well like i did last year so you don't, you're not locked in the like one long preview it's probably one thing I, i'll look to do i'll do it weight class by weight class to break it up for you guys a little bit so anyway so then you can pick and choose and cherry pick as you want uh what weight class is that maybe uh you care for more than others and then watch at your leisure but um that's all i got Folks, as always, thank you for all the support of what we do at paywrestling.com. We couldn't do what we do without you guys, the fans, uh, you know, supporting us. So it, uh, it is greatly appreciated. Um, it, it, is, it is mutual. Uh, you know, we, we get a lot of feedback of, of the job that we do and the service we provide. It, it, it's mutual. Like, we really appreciate the support that we get from all of you. So, uh, See y'all on a, you know, see y'all in the gym somewhere. This not obvious. See some of you in the gym this weekend, uh, hopefully. <laughs>